there is Xenosaurus. This has to be one of my favorite dinosaurs. The prefix Therizino roughly means scythe, while the prefix Saurus, well that means lizard. Scythe. Lizard. That's a pretty metal name if you ask me. So why gangs of species such a special name? Well, the only evidence we have of Therizinosaurus is their arms, with impressive meter-long or three-foot claws. They are some of, if not the, largest claws of the animal kingdom, even in comparison to the whole body of the animal itself. The holotype, that's a fossil specimen that gives a species its name, it was found in Mongolia by a Soviet expedition, because yes, even the USSR enjoyed and studied dinosaurs. The huge claws were uncovered from the desert sand in 1954, which I looked up for the script, but it makes me really excited because my favorite movie, Creature from the Black Lagoon, which used paleontology as a major plot point. It was <laughs> it was released in 1954 as well. Allow me to take tuck that year away with uh, 1993 as a favorite year. Anyways, the claws themselves were found with the bones to be pretty much complete forearm and shoulder blades, allowing us a nearly complete picture of the arms of the animal. We also found fragments of the pelvis of this animal, from my understanding, but due to the very nature of how rare fossils are, Therizinosaurus is just one of many that is known from fragments instead of complete specimens. Throwback to Carnotaurus, we were actually extremely lucky to have found a practically complete specimen for a holotype. That doesn't typically happen even ignoring the rare skin impressions for a moment that came with Carnotaurus. Okay, okay. I know what you may be thinking. We only have the arms of the animal. How are you going to get a whole video out of a pair of arms? Well, excuse you, these arms are really neat. But also, we have similar species that we can pull information from. Not living species, but a cousin of the Therizinosaurus, known as Dinocheris. Not to be mistaken for the Dionychus, a dromaeosaur more akin to a velociraptor. I've, uh, I've made that mistake plenty of times before. They're really similar names. Anyway, uh, we know a lot about Dinocheris, which lends the same knowledge to Therizinosaurus. So, what do we know? What we do know is more uh, restrained than for other animals. Without having any of Therizinosaurus's skull specifically, its study can be difficult to ascertain. From related species and teeth that can, can be hypothesized as being Therizinosaurus's, we can assume that it had a beak and, well, maybe what is like like hadrosaurs or ceratopsids, herbivores that had beaks and teeth. So they were probably herbivorous for the main part, but without having the skull uh, specifically, there's still that chance that it could be carnivorous, at, at least like a little. With more certainty, we can assume what the animal looked like. We know today that most theropod dinosaurs had their spines parallel to the ground instead of at an angle, as old tripodal reconstructions propose. However, there will always be exceptions to the rule, being in this case Therizinosaurus and its cousins. Now, they most certainly did not drag their short little tails on the ground behind them. It was still used as a counterbalance to move their center of gravity to a more manageable spot like their hips. But the animal did have a spine that was more or less at a 45 degree angle, or maybe less, that's just the angle that comes to mind easiest. Therizinosaurus also had, well likely had, a long neck, kind of like a swan or a goose. It was likely long and thin, though 
imagine if we uncovered a whole Therizinosaurus skeleton and it, <laughs> it uh, had a neck as long as like, I don't know, my mom suggested a corgi, a friend suggested a prairie dog, <laughs> just really short, right? I just think that would be funny. It's unlikely, based on similar animals, but it's not out the realm of possibility. Anyways, back being into the more likely side is that their Xenosaurus had a pot belly, so to speak. It's That's a stomach that appears fat and kind of bulging a little because of the animal's guts. Oh, don't get it twisted. Dinosaurs were robust boys. And likely are underweight in a good majority of paleo art today. Especially if through the skin you can see the holes of the skull. They might have been some chunky boys with plenty of muscle, of course. Therizinosaurus would look especially thick. I'm going on a tangent of sorts, let's move on. Moving on, we are to the use of those claws. Well, just like the last two dinosaurs' notable features, some of the Iguanodon, the horns of the Carnotaurus, we don't strictly know the use of Therizinosaurus' claws. I know, I know, disappointing. Your first thought to three foot, Meter long claws may be violence, but it's the speaking. Some believe that the claws would be too fragile to be used so harshly. If you ask me though, I think it's kind of likely. I honestly think that some paleontologists are too quick to rule certain parts of dinosaurs, quote, too fragile to fight with. But I emphasize that is my opinion. I never claim to be an expert, nor will I ever, even if I got a degree in paleontology. I just really, really like the topic, and I wanted to share my, my glee with others. So let's talk about the other presumed uses, eh? Well, another hypothesis to the use of Therizinosaurus's claws would be to bring food down from higher branches. Uh, because it is an herbivore, and it had a longer neck, it would go for, you know, leaves on trees. So, you know, it, it is an honest chance. But when you compare the arms of the animal to the neck, or at least our estimate of the neck, the arms would have to reach up at an awkward angle, and wouldn't really reach much further than the neck itself. Even if the arms suppressed the next night in the first place. The last hypothesis I know of would be the idea of the claws being used to impress mates. Longer claws that were either more straight or more curved uh, would signify a healthy individual to create offspring with. As healthier mates means healthier children that are more likely to survive and make even more offspring. I think this is a cop-out hypothesis, because it is, in my view, the most likely for most stuff, but it's not a mutually exclusive kind of thing. I mean, think about it. If the claws broke easily, that would mean an unhealthy mate more unlikely to have offspring due to the weak broken claws from fighting. You know? <laughs> It just goes hand in hand with other things, like the antlers of deer or moose. Those aren't just for impressing mates, they're also for interspecies combat. So aside from all of that, really only feathers are it to talk about. And yeah, it would have had feathers, most likely. Mainly proto-feathers, to be exact, a very few dinosaurs have, or, or uh, had derived feathers like birds do today. <laughs> Altogether, I just think that makes up for <laughs> a funky little reed big. They were 5 meters or 16 and a half feet tall. Uh, dinosaur friends. Huge claws, the modern idea of feathers, and the only family to have the spine at an angle that wasn't traditional. It's so funky, what's not to love? Ah, I hope I didn't go on for too long again. I don't mean to do that. 
Anyway, if you like the Thera Xenosaurus I've drawn for you, it's available on the Redbubble shop. I'm Bindu, the coolest quote-unquote failure you'll ever know. B parentheses. And I'll see you alongside the next terrible lizard.